Welcome back to Element 14 Presents. I'm Clem and the inevitable has happened. I've made my own single board computer and it's a crazy weird one. Let's check it out. In two previous episodes we have created a single board computer based on an ESP32. Yes, this one runs Linux, full episode linked below. And we've created a GPU made from a Raspberry Pi Pico. Or is it more of a graphics adapter? Basically, not really a GPU. It doesn't matter, also full video down below. And now we make them like one. And because that's not weird enough remotely, we also add a Raspberry Pi into the mix that you can optionally put it on so you have a single board computer on your single board computer or a microcontroller platform on your single board computer and a secondary GPU on your single board computer. And if that is still not weird enough, let's make it that you can plug the whole thing into another computer. So how do you mash up projects and make them one? You build a new PCB. I've learned from my previous mistakes of trying to integrate the design too much in my first steps. So instead of using a bare RP2040 and some external flash and stuff, I just use a Raspberry Pi Pico, embed that on my board, and once we have everything working, then all the integration happens. So a few things already went wrong with this. Uh, I noticed that after assembly. This is the wrong header for my SATA connection, or basically just SATA power, it's the wrong way around. So I need the other one. Couldn't find that, thought it was the right one, it wasn't. So that needs to be changed in the future. Also, this little uh, ESD protection chip should be on the other port. I didn't update the uh, labels in the schematic, so now it got connected to the different port. It still works, but it should be on the other port. And then there are some minor routing things. What is this now? Basically, it's a microcontroller platform with all these GPIOs in Raspberry Pi style and this Pico as a secondary processor. And how you use it is basically up to you. But here is the usage that I came up with. So now I could run Arduino code or stuff that I wrote with the ESP IDF just on this ESP32. Or I could run Pico code, whatever I want, and use these basically as two processors on one board. But I'm gonna flash Linux on the ESP32 S3, and I'm gonna put my DVI output code <laughs> onto this little uh, processor. They are both connected with I2C. And let's see if we can get this thing to talk through that to a screen. The screens that I'm using are just some uh, small HDMI capable screens that I basically use for camera work. So I previously had these mounted on my camera so I could see myself and now I do the same with a phone. So I didn't need those anymore but they are still capable and there are budget options if you need a small HDMI screen. Uh, this is by the way not HDMI, this is a DVI signal. And once you plug it in and the valid signal comes on, the screen also tells you that is DVI. I've created a sketch in Arduino for the ESP32 and one for the RP2040. Uh, so basically, if you flash both of them, then a set of commands with different writings and stuff gets pushed over as C to the other device and then puts on the screen. And with every change of line, it also changes uh, rotation and color and whatever. For now, there's only graphics mode and you can fill the screen with different graphics. The text is only in white because that seems to be a limitation of the graphics library. Maybe that gets patched in the future, but we now know that these can talk to each other over I2C and we can push messages directly on a screen pretty easily. Okay, let's get weird. We're now flashing Linux on the ESP32 S3. You saw me do that in a previous episode, but I've made a completely new flash tool that is better and funkier than ever. It has default values, it comes with uh, a working OS already by default, and it allows you to change to whatever binaries you want to flash on there if you made your own custom Linux port, basically. Well, it also has like colorful outputs. I recently learned how to do that uh, in uh, basically my little programs that I run in the terminal. But the best thing is, it's just bash. 
it's not even Python or anything. It's just a bash script. That means it's fully portable. You can do that on anything. And it installs the complete ESP toolchain for you. So you just run the script, it installs all the things. So it will take a while to install that. Then it flashes all the stuff on the ESP32. That takes about eight to 10 minutes, depending on the size of the files. And then you're basically ready to boot Linux on your ESP32 S3. Okay, I'm trying, like I would like to push some messages over I2C to the Pico GPU. Yeah, but that's not happening because I2C detect is not in the kernel. Well, yeah, I thought it was. It's not in the version that I have. Uh, apparently there might be some versions already out there that have working I2C. I don't found those. So uh, I'm not a kernel developer and I can't really like compile my own versions with additional features. I basically follow instructions for that. That's not so good. But could we do that from a device that already has a working I2C, um, like a Raspberry Pi? These header pins have a dual purpose. They are connected to all the GPIOs, so you have full control over them with your USB 32, but also there are like dual stacking headers. So you can put something on the back and something on the front. And on the back, a Raspberry Pi is the thing that goes there. So if you just put those together, I'm using a Pi 4, but it works with any version that has the same pinout or any other single board computer, basically. Uh, you now have a sandwich <laughs> that is pretty much like more than one computer in one. And now we try to communicate from the Raspberry Pi to our Pico over I2C. Okay, well, that's weird. Um, I2C detect, it's not detecting the Pico. It should. It's just an I2C device that I declared in Arduino. And the microcontrollers had no problem communicating at all. So something's going on here. Um, maybe the connections are not right. Like, it's a big bus with a lot of devices on there. Maybe it doesn't like a host device. So let's disable the uh, ESP32 and make sure that nothing else is talking in host mode on the bus. Okay, disabling the ESP32 uh, did not change much. Uh, the only main difference is that the Pico, f uh, it, it seems it faster puts out a valid DVI signal. Maybe because there's no ambiguous signal on the bus talking to it so it can directly set up its devices and doesn't have to listen to any incoming messages at the moment. But the Raspberry Pi is still not detecting anything and I've tried like all the buses and a few tutorials on how to properly activate it. I've heard that there is a broken I2C implementation on the Pi 5, not for the Pi 4 and I've also tried um, one that I know I2C is working on. It's the Pi 3A. I've used that in a few projects that used I2C, so I know that one works. It also has the old, the pre-Raspian on there <laughs> that uh, had a working I2C implementation, so there are no software quirks, and that could also not detect it. Weird thing, I've also tried this uh, other I2C device, and this one was detected by one, but not the other. So there could still be something wrong in the board design. Let's solder in some bodge wires and try again. Hello, I'm James from Workbench Wednesdays, a show about the stuff found on your electronics workbench. Look for new episodes on, well, Wednesdays. You can connect with me over on the Element 14 community. I look forward to seeing you. For now, it is time to get back to watching this week's project video. Okay, bodge wires are not helping. It seems that the I2C thing does something different. Uh, I really can't get any verbose output while boot uh, easily, but I know a device that does that. And that's basically a Latipanda Delta, which should in theory work as well. I just can't connect it directly, but I could put my device with this header on the PCIe port that I could access. We've done that in the AI server episode. So I basically put an adapter on there, stick this one in and try to talk over this I2C bus. And then let's see if it outputs some valuable information. Almost like expected, uh, <laughs> the Latte Panda also doesn't just work with it. I of course had to uh, then install I2C detect onto my Ubuntu install that I did on there. And 
try to identify it. There are a lot of devices talking on the bus, but this one is not one of them. But after a few reboots, I noticed something. Directly in the logs that you see on the boot, it's just for a very brief moment, but you can see it has an I2C error. And the I2C error names the correct device address that I've given it, hex5. And it names that device and says, missing vendor identification. So I think the devices on the bus are expected to answer to the kernel to get them registered in the OS, basically. That's, that's my, I'm, I don't know how it actually works. That's just my suspicion. So I think they are asking who you are and if they don't answer in the correct way, then they just say, maybe that's a broken device or something. I'm not dealing with it. And I think that's why it's not recognized at all. And if I use like any other I2C device, it should usually just react to it because it follows a standard uh, procedure. And I could find while well, this one wasn't completely registering. It does perfectly fine on some and not on the others because I think this one is just meant for uh, microcontroller usage and there is no like kernel identifier or whatever programmed into this chip. If there is a Linux driver for an I2C device, then I think it has all these vendor identification things and if not, then not. And I basically just made up a bit of code and put it on a, on a Pico. There is no vendor identification. I have no idea, idea how it should answer and what it should say. So I think that is the reason why it's not working. So we have to work around that. I could now uh, like find out how to get this device registered or I could make a video in time and just find another bus to put my thing onto. And my original idea was to make them talk via a UART bus to put out directly the console logs from one device to another. Well, the UART bus, I would need some soldering and stuff, but what I can do is basically add a serial interpretation to my uh, Pico code. So it also recognizes messages that come in via the USB port or over UART. And then I have to make a driver that pushes the messages from the user space in Linux to the port, which is then picked up by the Pico GPU and then put on the screen. So we have to make two things of code. First, Arduino, and then some Python, I think. You remember that I said the SATA connector is not the right one and that doesn't work for power? Well, my plan was to put this thing into a computer and then just connect SATA for power. That's not happening, so I have to do a weird trick. I'm powering the Raspberry Pi directly and then use a USB cable on one of its USB ports and sling that back to the other side of the device and plug it into the USB-C ports. And that, in turn, powers the rest of the system. Workarounds, they work. I also have to make sure that the right data is coming to the Raspberry Pi, so I also have to connect its USB port. I'm not messing around with the UART pins of the Raspberry Pi at the moment. I just don't have the time anymore. So I'm using a USB micro cable, plug that also into my Raspberry Pi and put it towards the Pico. And now we have to push our code to the Pico and we do that over the network for convenience. In the ESP32 Linux episode, someone pointed out that you could use SCP to transfer files onto your single board computer. So SCP is basically SSH, but it does file transfer. And I'm using that to get the files from my main work computer onto the Raspberry Pi, uh, mainly the driver, and then onto the Raspberry Pi. On there, I will compile uh, my Python code with Pi installer. So I basically get a binary version of it. And that means it's easier portable and you don't have to have uh, some Python dependencies and stuff installed. Uh, that makes it portable. I also put all these versions of the codes into the download section on the Element 14 community. So you can have that all. Now that we have the driver on the device, we can connect both screens. So one goes to the Pi and shows the normal desktop. The other one goes to the Pico and that is basically just what we push out to that. Uh, yeah, we can just run our script in a few ways, actually. We could also import the Python variant as a module into another Python program. So you basically can just add DVI output to your existing Python code if you want. Uh, but what we're uh, showcasing now is I'm using the compiled binary 
and I'm just starting it and type on my computer because that one is connected over SSH to this computer. So it's a computer controlling a computer that controls another computer that pushes the messages on the screen. So <laughs> it gets weird. I'm just typing away and you can see what I'm doing. Just typing in is just half the fun. This takes the standard input and pushes it over to the Pico. So what we can also do is pipeline commands into it. So we have one command, pipeline, it in, its output into our GPU driver and that puts the, the contents on the screen so we can read out files or just have some verbose output for commands or debug information or whatever we need. Uh, you get where the purpose of these things come into play. So what is all this good for then? Well, basically you can put a computer into a bigger computer and make that like take care of the computer and if something goes wrong you can output over an independent screen. Uh, this might be helpful for some development work or for network administrators. Not in this form, it has to be a bit revised of course. Uh, but also the standalone thing, that should also now work. So you can just plug in USB and add another output to your projects and uh, put out whatever you want in text mode onto another DVI screen. Um, there's no frame buffer at the moment. I'm not smart enough to program one, so maybe you are. Uh, the project is open, so please contribute if you can, and we maybe be able to give this thing some graphic, uh, graphics capabilities soon. The PCI port, as I mentioned, not working at the moment uh, because of the I2C uh, dependencies, so it has to, I think it just has to say the magic words to be allowed to talk on the single board computers bus directly. So if you know those magic phrases, let me know and we can add them to the code. But I would also like to develop a better version of the future that uses real PCIe <laughs> and puts that card on the bus so it basically would work out of the box. So what's next for this weird project? This couldn't be like the end game of it. It has too many problems. So. I actually want to take a little step back. I want to focus on the Pico GPU at the moment. And I would like to first make like a full and embedded version of this with a USB-C port and not this dreaded micro USB. But also I want to get the PCIe port working for real. So with a real PCIe interface chip and then going over USB maybe. Uh, or we can maybe get the I2C stuff working if you have the knowledge to let this correctly enumerate uh, onto a real PCIe bus. Let's hope the community has some great ideas for that. There are plenty of applications that I can think of. I basically want to have a module that I could just plop into any project if I want to give it a DVI screen. So if you have a microcontroller project like an Arduino project and you just want to connect that old DVI screen or HDMI screen that you have laying around with that, you could just plop it in, solder some wires and that's it, just over I2C. Or if you want to have a secondary debug output for your single board computer, you just connect this via USB or with the PCIe and you would have it. So I can see a lot of applications. Let me know what you think of it and if you have some ideas for some further applications. For the full system, I basically like I, I push this together and try to make this into a, a compact thing and then put onto it all that we've learned from the other development and maybe one day I have a practical single board computer of my own. <laughs> As always, all the code and CAD and stuff that you would need to build your own is on the Element 14 community. You can also go there to talk to me and other hosts and give us your ideas for upcoming projects. And speaking of upcoming projects, I gotta go, there's another project waiting for me. <laughs>